Hey, Phys C Kids, Campbell here. In this video, we're going to look at the last of our integrals for charge distributions before we get to Gauss. And this is going to be for a disk of charge. Now, with a disk of charge, we are dealing with a surface charge density. And the symbol for surface charge density is the sigma. So surface charge density is the charge per surface area, A, um, which means that we're going to change that into a dq over dA. Now, how do we do an integral for this charge disk? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to divide it up into little tiny rings. And those little tiny rings are going to have a little bit of dq that we're going to add up over a distance dr from the center of the disk. And so I'm just going to make little rings of my dq with my little width dr, and I'm going to add them up. Now, hmm, I got a dq, I got a dr, and I got a dA. And if we're looking at the electric field some point away from the disk, so here's a little side view of my ring, right? I also have an angle here, right? But the good news is this is like a cone, right? So the cone is uh, going to be symmetric. Uh, the disk is symmetric because we're about this axis because we're coming out of the center of it, which means that our, in this case, the vertical components from this picture are going to cancel and our x components are going to add. So we're only going to have to deal with, say, cosine theta in this case. But, of course, that's also changing, right? Because, you know, as I get closer in, the, the angle is going to be different than if I was farther out. Gosh, that's beautiful. Um, so we have a changing angle. We have dq. We got a dr. So what do we do? Well, we're kind of going to go back to what we did a little bit with our off-axis line of charge in that we're going to replace the r, um, the distance away, in terms of the variables uh, that one, the variable changing the distance r uh, to that concentric ring from the center. But our axes here, call this x, and the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to call it z. Um, but that's going to be a constant value so that we can replace the r squared on the bottom of the kq over r squared with uh, a variable where there's only one changing. Uh, of course, we're going to have to change the cosine theta and replace it in terms of the variables x and there should be little r. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that's a big r. Um, and so, so what we want to do is we want to get this all in terms of r so we can integrate r from 0, the very center, to the radius, uh, the outside of my disk. So that means we also have to change dA. And so instead of doing dq is equal to sigma dA, we're going to change A, right? An area is also a length times a width. Now, our length, right, is going to be the circumference of my little concentric ring here. So that means my dQ is going to be sigma, the 2 pi r, which is the length of my concentric uh, ring, times dr. So once I do all those changes, I will just have one thing, one thing we're adding up, and that's going to be the r, the radius from the center to our concentric ring. Okay, so let's, let's go about doing this. All right, so I have a uni uniformly charged disk. It has a positive charge q and a radius r. And I want to know, and this is three-dimensional, can't you tell? Uh, about the electric field at some distance z from the center of this disk. So when I make my little concentric rings, right, each concentric ring is going to have uh, an electric field uh, that is going to point, uh, that's a beautiful one, uh, one's going to point up, and then from the other side of that concentric ring, it's going to point down. Um, but we can see here that if we do that all the way around, for a bunch of millions and trillions of concentric rings, that the electric field, in this case on the y-axis, is going to be zero. Those are going to cancel each other out. The vertical components are going to cancel out. So that means that my net electric field is going to be the electric field on the x-axis. 
And so we're going to be adding up all of the electric field. And if we uh, make a little <laughs> triangle here, uh, and that's our theta, that's going to be our theta. Uh, so that's going to be the cosine of theta. Okay, so our net electric field is going to be 1 over 4 pi e naught, the integral of dq over, now we have a lot of r's, right? I called this r on the last slide. Um, so I don't want to call this distance here, the distance from here to here, I don't want to call that r. Let's call, let's, how about we just call that r prime? Is that all right if we call that r prime? Um, so then we'll call that r prime squared. Or does that look like r to the 12th? I don't know. Work with me here. Um, and then times the cosine of theta. Too many r's, right? That's going to be kind of confusing. I apologize. Okay, so one, we're going to replace our dq in terms of the charge density, which is sigma. So that's a charge per the whole area. Uh, dA, which we're going to replace with the length of 2 pi r for each ring, dr. And then that's going to be the r, this r, the r from the center to my concentric ring. My r prime, <laughs> why didn't I choose a different letter? I don't know, because, you know, why not be confusing? Uh, this distance here, we're going to write in terms of that uh, little r, the thing that I called r, and my distance z. So we're going to make a little right triangle here. And so r prime is going to equal uh, r squared, the radius of my concentric ring, plus uh, z squared, the distance to the point of interest. And then lastly, we want to replace our cosine theta in terms of the same variables. So if this is our theta, right, the cosine would be that distance z to the point of interest, which could be z, x, y, whatever, whatever we call it or whatever the problem defines it as, over the hypotenuse, which was my r prime, which is the square root of r squared plus z squared. So it, interestingly enough, this looks more like the off-axis line of charge thing than a, a ring itself, a single, single ring. Okay, so let's plug all this stuff in. So E net is 1 over 4 pi E naught, or K, you could call that K too. The integral of dq, which is our lambda 2 pi r dr, over r prime squared, which we said, as soon as we square that, that's going to be r squared plus z squared, times the cosine of theta, uh, which is going to be z over r squared, oops, sorry, the square root of r squared plus z squared. Okay, so... 2 pi sigma z, those are all constants, so we're going to pull those out of our integral. And so on top here, we're going to have uh, 2, we're going to have pi, we're going to have sigma, we're going to have z, gosh, that's a beautiful z, over 4 pi e naught. And then we're going to take the integral of r dr all over r squared plus z squared to the three halves. All right. And, oh, we have to have limits. So we're going to integrate all these little r's, all our little radiuses from the zero point in the very center to the outer surface of the disk, r. Now, I didn't write the integral. So you would need an integral table for this. So if you ever have to do something like this, you will find on your integral table that uh, the integral of x dx over x squared plus a squared to the 3 halves is equal to negative 1 over the square root of x squared plus a squared. Now, you're not expected to know that. You really are not. So it, is, it, is, it would be given to you on your integral table. All right. So... Now, notice I can do some canceling here. So I'm going to do that before I uh, write my integral. So we're going to have sigma z. Now, notice that, that the 1 over 4 pi e naught wouldn't have canceling if we used k instead. But uh, sometimes it's handy to use the 1 over 4 pi e naught. Uh, all right. So we said that this integral, according to our integral table, is uh, negative 1 over the square root of 
x squared, which is our changing thing, so that's our r squared, plus uh, our a squared is the constant, so that was our z squared, and we're going to do that from 0 uh, to r. Okay, so we get our sigma z over 2 e naught, and then when we put in our r, right, we're going to have a negative 1 over the square root of r squared plus z squared, that's the capital R, minus a negative of our 1 over the square root. So this would, the r would be 0, right? And then that would be plus z squared. Now, in the interest of time, if I were on an AP exam and I was doing this, I would stop here. But, you know, we got all the time in the world, right? So uh, we can rewrite this as e net is equal to sigma z over 2 e naught. And then uh, I, don't, I don't like negatives in the front. So this here, right, is going to simplify it to just z. So I'm going to have 1 over z minus, and I just moved it because I, I don't like a negative. I don't like the negative up there. It looks ugly. I'm sure there's some real math reason to that, but, you know, me and math, it's not a thing. All right, so, and then, of course, uh, you know, maybe we could pull the z out because I have another z here, but you know what? Maybe we will just, just leave it here. What do you think? You think that's good? Why not? I mean, we could make a common denominator and do all that fun stuff. Should we do that? You know what? If you're done with me, you can turn off the video, but you know what? Why not? I still have time. Let's make a common denominator. Okay, so we have uh, sigma z over 2 e naught. Our common denominator would be the square root of r squared plus z squared over uh, z times the square root of r squared plus z squared. Oh, get rid of that right there because that looks really bad. Um, and then minus z, and then um, we could pull, we could cancel out this z, and then our final net electric field is going to be sigma over 2 e naught, and then here I have, uh, this would be 1 minus z over the square root of r squared plus z squared. See? That's all right, right? Now, obviously, it would look different if we had used k. We wouldn't have been able to cancel that 4 pi or that 2 pi that was on the top. So um, I guess it would, well, if we used k, I'm thinking this would look like uh, k times uh, 2 pi sigma z. Uh, no, the z would cancel still. Uh, and 1 minus z over R, the square root of r squared plus z squared, if you actually cared. Um, so in this case, it looks actually better with using the 4 pi e naught, because, you know, sometimes that happens. All right, now I'm done, if you are still here. Bye.